We are so grateful that you're joining us in worship this morning. And we had a couple of announcements that we wanted to lift up to you. The first is that we are seeking about 12 volunteers to take handmade cards to those who are able to get out. And, and these are going to be for Valentine's. And if you're interested in participating and sharing some time and love with our homebound members, you can contact Asa at asa at fumcmorristown.org. And we are so thankful for Lee Travis for the gift of these beautiful cards, and we can't wait to share them with some of our shut-in members. We also want to say a thank you to all of our volunteers who contributed to our blanket drive and our drive for the Humane Society. Uh, I got to go to Daily Bread, and I gave away every single blanket that had been given at that time. And then we also sent a whole van full of pet food and toys and blankets to the Humane Society. And then our First Cares team is wanting to reach out to some people in our church. And so uh, if you are in need or would like to volunteer for any of these ministries, one of them would be uh, to help people sign up to receive the vaccine. Also, we know that some of our people that have been homebound or sick have needed meals and delivery of those meals. We've also wanted to put together some goodie bags and supplies and then we would also like to thank some of our frontline heroes. And we're trying to think of creative ways to celebrate some of those people. So if you'd either like to participate in one of those ministries or be a recipient of one, please let us know in the church office. But now is the time for worship. So would you join us and uh, prepare your hearts and minds for all that we have in store.
I'd like to invite you to join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we'd like to lift up a few of our prayer concerns. And the first one is Ronnie Malloy. Uh, she is home and making progress, but it's probably going to be a while before she's running full speed again. We also want to remember Joanne Weir, who has been in the hospital. Also Ben Stapleton's parents. Uh, he is helping care for them and traveling back and forth. We want to always remember Mitch Robinson. Lloyd Connery has been in the hospital but is home. Also, uh, Dan Trombley and Larry Music have been in the hospital recently, and uh, we are just praying for their recovery. But we wanted to thank everybody once again for your donations of blankets for our homeless friends and also for pet supplies for the Humane Society. But would you join me now in prayer? Holy and gracious Father, as Asa is going to be talking about it in a little while, there are times where we want to look at your world from a wide view, and sometimes we have to get very specific. And we know that in general, we all want peace. We all want justice. We all want uh, for this world to be a better place to leave to our grandchildren than how we found it. But we recognize that there are times where we're going to have to, instead of just taking the, the big view, we're going to have to take a small view, that we're going to have to see the people that are right in front of us. And we know that it takes a spiritual and emotional and a psychological leap to jump into the fray. But Father, we pray that you would help give us courage. We pray that we might go with your Spirit. We ask that you might fill us with your love and your grace. We know that you have given us the greatest example in the gift of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who took the sins of the world upon himself. And we are the recipients of grace, of redemption, of his love. We pray that you would be with every person that is on our own sort of mental prayer list right now that you might, when those people and those names come to our mind, that you might motivate us to reach out in love and in compassion. But Father, today, most of all, we ask that you might help us to truly sense that you are active and present in our lives. And we thank you for all things, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verses 16 through 23. Paul says, If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I have become as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, 
so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I have become weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessing. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blood on a cross. 
Awake, O sleeper, and turn to the one who loved so amazing, surrendered his son. Awake, O sleeper, in the valley of bones, rescued from sin, no longer alone. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, starting with the 29th verse. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with the fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The world-famous, internationally known paleontologist Dr. Alan Grant has a saying, Boys are meant to be either one of two things. Some are astronomers and some are astronauts. Now, not to put words in the good doctor's mouth, but I dare say the same could be said for girls. Boys and girls who grow up to be astronomers like to think in terms of theory. They like to research instead of explore. And while they love to look at the sky, they like to keep their feet planted firmly on Mother Earth. They want the connections that staying on Earth offers, families and friends, and that sense of security about staying on Earth. Astronauts, on the other hand, are explorers at heart. They have no need to spend their time in a lab. They want to be out there, hands-on, taking a look for themselves. They want to feel all that exploring has to offer. They want to plant their feet on, on soil that is far away. Or they want to run their fingers through the sand or to hold a stone in their hands. They are willing to put their lives on the line, willing to leave family and friends behind for this search that drives them. Dr. Grant doesn't believe that one is right or that one is wrong or that one is preferable over the other. He is just making an observation that everyone has to choose which way they are called to move in the world. Paul is one of the rare people who started out their lives as an astronomer and then answered a call to be an astronaut. What we know of Paul is that he was a Jewish rabbi and religious leaders and, and was a pretty high up in the hierarchy of the temple system. He would have been a highly educated man starting at a very young age to memorize and learn all the Jewish scriptures. He would have had a family, as most Jewish men were expected to marry and start and support a household. So this is the perfect example of an astronomer, one who is highly intelligent, skilled, but spends most of his time reading and interpreting the ancient texts and was probably even a teacher for young up-and-coming rabbis. But then he had an experience of the risen Christ that shook him. It made him question everything he had ever done in his life. On the road to Damascus, Paul became an astronaut. He leaves his family behind to commit his life to traveling and preaching and teaching about Jesus, to being hands-on in starting churches and putting his hands on people as he taught them about Christ. Paul baptized, he healed, and as far as we know, he never saw his family again. Paul's life did a 180 that day on the road to Damascus. And years later, as he is writing this letter to the people in the church that he started in Corinth, Paul tries to explain where this passion for the gospel came from. He tells them and tells us that he was compelled to spread the gospel, compelled to tell others about the Messiah, Jesus from Nazareth, who came back from the dead. Not only is he compelled, he is doomed if he somehow refuses to share the gospel with others. 
Paul goes on to say that this message of life was entrusted to him. This means that he could have chosen to go back to being a rabbi, chosen to go back to his wife and family, but this message of life and love was so overwhelming that he gives up everything to, in his words, become a slave to the task of spreading the gospel. But it's this last line of this reading where we see how far Paul has come from being an astronomer into being an astronaut. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. Now, I paired this reading from Paul up with a story from the gospel. Last week, Walter told us about the time Jesus was in Capernaum, and he had been teaching in the local synagogue when a man came in who was possessed with a demon, and Jesus cast out the demon. Mark tells us that this story happens immediately after Jesus and his disciples finished their time teaching at the synagogue. The go-to home of Simon and Andrew, only to find that Simon's mother-in-law is in the bed sick with a fever. Mark doesn't tell us whether or not this is a life-threatening illness or if this just had a bad cold. Mark isn't interested in all the details. He is interested in Jesus and how just by taking her by the hand, he heals her. She's not just better, she's as good as new. She doesn't still need a few days to get her strength back. She feels as though she had never been sick at all. Her response is not to fall at the feet of Jesus to thank him or to run into the streets of Capernaum telling everyone about what had just happened to her. Her response to being healed is service. Jesus didn't ask to be served. He says many times throughout the Gospels that he came to serve, not to be served. Maybe like Paul, she had an experience with Christ and now is compelled to service. Have you had a life-changing experience with Christ? An experience that compelled you to move from a life of astronomer to the life of an astronaut? I have. I didn't grow up about dreaming about being a preacher. My life changed when I started being active in my local United Methodist congregation as a youth and young adult. And I kept hearing the teachings of Jesus, the teachings about love and grace and mercy. I heard about a God who had no desire to pick my life apart, searching for an excuse to send me to my everlasting damnation. The more I learned about Jesus through the lens of the Methodist Church, the more I felt the scales fall from my eyes. I was in love with Jesus. For much of my life, I wanted to be more of the astronomer in my faith. I wanted to observe and discuss. That's why I loved seminary. We were reading and hearing about the issues of the church, and then we would go to study groups or sit around in groups of friends and talk about it all. But then I was also called to be an astronaut in the church, to go and do the work of the church. My natural inclination is to be an observer and to ponder all that I have seen and perhaps even write about it. But the call of Christ bids me to participate in God's work, not just observe it. In the past few weeks, we have been looking at our call as Christians. We've talked about making a commitment throughout these passages. Follow me is the call that we respond to every time that we say yes to Jesus. So this week, once again, we come to the opportunity to make our commitment to service. Because we have been healed in so many ways, because we have been claimed and loved and accepted in ways that surprise us even still. And we commit to serve in the name of the one who loves like that. Have you thought about how you have been healed by Christ? Has he changed the trajectory of your life? Has your old self been discarded as part of the flotsam and jetsam of space? In the beginning of the Methodist movement, John Wesley required his people to be in small groups called classes. And each time the classes gathered, a crucial question was asked. How is it with your soul? Wesley wanted his people to examine and evaluate how they were living into the call of Jesus. Follow me. Were they participating in the work or simply observing? Was the work transforming them and the world? Let us call ourselves to this meaningful and important work. If Christ has healed you, then where in the life of the church do you feel compelled to serve? If your fever is gone, then where can you be of service to the church in a new and exciting way, and one that is meaningful not just for you but for those around you? 
other members of the church, your family, and your neighbors. So let us celebrate service today, but not as another call to just do more, to give more, to work harder, or to fill our overburdened schedules with work. Yes, there is always a call to more service, but instead let's celebrate service as our way of saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for our healing. It seems we have all been astronomers this last year, observing the works of Christ from our couches because for many of us, we couldn't participate. But those days are coming to an end, thanks be to God. And this is what I know to be true, that Christ calls all of us to be astronauts, to be actively involved in experiencing our salvation firsthand and helping others to do the same. My beloved, my prayer for you this week is that the Christ has healed you and now you serve in joy. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to invite you to join me in this time of prayer together. We cannot hide from you, everlasting God, even if we were to go from one edge of creation to the next. You speak to us of compassion but the ways in which we treat others show we have not been listening. You explain your hopes to us and we act as if we don't have a clue as to what is going on. We run as fast and as far from you as we can and wonder why we have no energy to follow Jesus. Yet you search for us in the deserted places we flee to so you can take us by the hand to show us the way to life with you. You heal our broken hearts so that we can offer them to others. You fill us with your strength so we can bind ourselves to Jesus, our Savior, following him to serve all of your children. It is in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Sisters, we began this season by remembering our baptisms that we are claimed by God, a God who loves all of us. And then we continue to hear the call of Christ to follow me. So as we continue into this new year, into this new way of living, and as we look forward to coming back to church and coming into whatever our new normal is going to be, may we not just be astronomers but may we live into the astronaut life of the church. May we be willing to follow Christ to the ends of the earth, but may we always remember that we are loved and claimed by God. Amen.